Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be installing the Race Bread 250 RS GT Wing Kit. Let's get into this install, I'm super excited. So opening the box, you're greeted with uh, instructions and a nice pack of gummy bears. Thank you, Race Bread. As I said before, this is the 250 RS GT Wing Kit. Full installation manual for the NC Miata. Color photos, awesome. Here's some of the bracketry that you'll see in the beginning when you're unboxing. Here's the air damp piece that I'm putting on. We'll save that for later. And there's the end plates and a couple more bracketry. Okay, following along right with the instructions, I've used my rev nut tool to put in the chunk stoppers once you remove the rubber off. That was originally there. This is the new piece. That's in, not tight, but it's threaded in. I use their templates to put where I'm gonna be cutting out. Um, you need an angle grinder for that. Got driver and passenger all hooked up, so I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna cut the, uh, the holes out. Okay, both sides are cut. Gonna deburr this side a little bit and then I'll move on to the next step. All right, so next step in the instructions is assembling the inner and outer rear brackets to the uprights. And I just wanted to take a second and show the nice quality of these brackets, how they're all labeled and just how they kind of labeled all the bolts and nuts and the entire installation instruction sheet's just super nice. So, all right, let's get right to it. And this is the passenger side upright with the bracketry. This is the one that goes to the trunk. This is labeled passenger outside. This is passenger inside. So let's move on to the driver side upright. This is both upright. It's completed. Very good quality product. I love how they're not flimsy or anything like that. Hardware is really nice. Everything's labeled. So let's move on. Finished drilling all the holes for the uprights. It's an eight millimeter drill bit. And uh, I will put the uprights on now. And then there's a backing plate that needs to go underneath. Driver's side bracketry is all in. Not too hard. You can see inside of there. But use the magnet to slide the bracket in, or the, the backing plate, and just carefully put the bolts and nuts in. and. It's all loose, so I'll work on the passenger side and I'll be able to snug everything up. One of them just loose. Put the other side right next to it and it'll bolt in right through there now i'm putting on the smaller bracket for the rear of the upright onto the trunk if i were to give a, a bit of ice to make this easier thread all of the new bolts and um, nuts together to kind of break them loose that way you can just hold them with your fingers thread them in and get like two or three threads in then you can get under with a with an allen key and then a wrench holding down the inside will make it a lot easier. All right, the uprights are on. It looks so sick. 
So these are all tight. I'm gonna go back again and tighten them. Need to tighten the brackets from trunk to the upright. Need to tighten those. This side. Yeah, all just needs to be snugged up, but took a lot of measurements and I think it's to what they their spec is. The gap between there is 27.3 inches. So I love the cutout. I'm really glad I went with this style. Cannot wait to put the wing on and or the, the airfoil and put it on, but it looks <laughs> it looks so cool right now. So alright, let's finish tightening the uprights. Well, it's a, it's a different day, same video, but a different day. I had to come back and finish this. I was missing some parts. I was missing the brackets from the airfoil to the upright. It happens. Race Fred was super cool. They sent me them right away and I'm back to finish the install. Should be no problem from here. So here I'm at currently, the uprights are on nice and sturdy. I wanted to touch up on why they have you guys put these stoppers in here to replace from the uh, rubber ones. These are gonna act as a new mounting point for the trunk. And it's, um, I, I think it's either either the same height or a little bit taller, but obviously it's made out of metal now instead of rubber where it's gonna collapse. And this is gonna make when the wing is on, it's gonna be a lot sturdier. I'm pushing it down pretty hard and I don't know how much you can see it's flexing, but even up here, it's not even flexing that much. So that's definitely going to be needed since this, this wing isn't technically chassis mounted. Um, but everything so far has been super sturdy. And yeah, let's finish putting the wing on. So these were the brackets I was missing as well as the uh, hardware for them. But moving along right with the instructions, this is kind of where I left off right here. Um, now it's just bolting up these brackets to the uh, airfoil with these uh, holes and the hardware. Okay, so the airfoil is on the brackets. I'm just using the third hole up. It looks kind of like flat. Once I put the end plates on, I'll be able to use an angle finder and see exactly what angle I'm at, but everything's on just loose. So I'll tighten that up. And that's how she's looking so far. All right, here's the wing fully on, fully attached. I gotta put the end plates on, but I wanted to show the flex right here. It is flexing quite a bit with all the, everything tightened up now, but it's not gonna be like rattling like this all the time. All right, I'll put the end plates on now. So you'll know when you have the end plates on correctly because the flat side goes towards the front of the car. I messed up and had them flipped, but my wing right now has, I think just about zero angle of attack. So I made the end plates flat, but the uh, entire wing's all on. And that's really about it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is how you install the Race Spread 250 RS GT wing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.